Well, viewers, you'll be stunned to know that I played a game that wasn't Warhammer Fantasy um, over the weekend. I played the Warhammer Horus Heresy 2.0. Um, if you've heard me complain a lot about the state of Warhammer 40,000, um, I used to play it on and off, um, but the rules have just become so complicated and uh, overlayered and FAQ'd and I could whinge about this all day. But I haven't played it for ages and my collection's just sort of gone stagnant. But this uh, this version of Warhammer 30,000 um, interested me. Um, I did have a Warhammer 30,000 collection from years ago where I did the Mechanicum um, Tag Matter on Messiah. So I've had the models just sitting around gathering dust for, I don't know, four or five years. Um, so when they announced it was going to be relaunched, I thought, well, I'll hang on for the Mechanic book because I've got models. Um, and I can easily just pick it back up. Yeah, uh, the Mechanic book dropped a couple of days ago from when this has been recorded. So I decided to ask uh, a friend of mine, Ian from Sector Wargaming, who are a rather successful channel. They do battle reports about 30k all the time. Uh, if you fancy the game, uh, a lot of known them for years. I've never actually played them, and um, said, "Yep, yeah, we'll uh, we'll have a game," and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I I had a thing about well, eighth edition forty thousand. It's um, I enjoyed how it simplified everything back from seventh edition. So it's quite f bizarre now that I'm saying I'm now saying that the rules of Warhammer thirty thousand which are based on 6th and 7th edition Warhammer 40,000, are more straightforward than current edition 40,000, which were based on a rule set designed to simplify 7th edition 40k, if that makes any sense. I'm not entirely sure that it does. That's how far we've come now, that these rules that were considered bloated and overdone and had to be um, reset are now more straightforward than the current edition of Warmer 40,000, in my opinion, anyway. So I thought I would just do a quick um, summary of what I liked about it and what I didn't. Uh, so the first thing I liked was that it was easy to set up. Um, it's literally two dice rolls. You roll a dice for what type of mission you're playing, and you roll a dice for how you're going to set up the board, and that's it. Um, it's, you deploy everything in one go, your opponent deploys everything in one go, there's one chance to seize the initiative, that's it. Um, so I really appreciated that ease of setting up. Um, again, I'm not, I shouldn't really turn this into a massive whinge fest about Warhammer well, 40,000, but the chart of going through how to set up a game, and it's probably my fault because I don't play that much and I don't get practiced at it, but it takes forever, I find, to set up a game of Warhammer well, 40,000. This took us maybe half an hour, and that's with none of us really knowing what we're doing. Because I'd never played before. Ian's played two games of uh, Horus Heresy in 2.0, uh, and there wasn't really a problem with that. It was very straightforward. Um, this this book has an index, which I'm both amazed and stunned at. Uh, modern uh, GW books tend not to have them, but when you try to look for a rule, you just look in the back, and it. With, I think most of the ones we look for, it told you the page number straight away, so the index is quite reliable. That sounds like a very small petty thing, but I'm, I'm very uh, appreciative that they've put an index into the main rule book because it makes things a lot easier. And that leads on to they use universal special rules which i really appreciate as well coming from the fantasy background where universal special rules are just how the game's played i i really like how there's a list of special rules that both people have access to both people understand what they are uh, and both people have a chance to read them and you don't have to continually explain to your opponent what these individually named rules do um, so it's going back to what it was like. I think 7th edition had Universal Special Rules. They got rid of them for 8th. Um, 
but rather than every profile having an individually named special rule, which is basically a duplicate of another special rule, um, just with its own unique name, all the special rules are in the main rule book in the index if you want to look them up and um, anyone can read them. And if it applies to you, you understand what it is and the same rule will apply to your opponent. So stubborn, it can apply to anything. You know what stubborn is. You can look it up in the book. Um, it's a lot easier to keep a track of the special rules. Maybe I'm biased because I prefer that setup anyway, but I really like that. Uh, what else have I got here? There was no alpha strike um, or nothing which seemed ludicrously overpowered. There was strong weapons. Um, there was tough armor. Um, but there's nothing that will just delete you off the board or very... Well, I'll say there's nothing. In that game, I didn't feel like um, I was just sitting back and watching me things being destroyed. I didn't feel like my um, weapons were overpowered and just deleting his army straight off the board. Um, I don't want to use the word balanced in a Games Workshop related thing, but I, it, it's getting it's getting towards that. I didn't feel anything was overly, struck, overly too powerful. I didn't feel anything was under, particularly underpowered. All the weapons did something, um, but they didn't do like, because it's only one, usually everything just does one damage in this. There's no multiple damage rolls. So you are not deleting loads of stuff in the first turn. You'll always have first turn advantage, but it's it's mitigated because the amount of damage put out is capped. Um, so it made it more back and forth. Like I didn't feel like anyone was dominating for a long period throughout the game or anyone was on the back foot it was very it was very much uh, it could go either way and i like that style of gameplay where you've got to continually think about what you're going to do next and what they're going to do because if you have got a slight advantage it's very easily taken away because of the way the 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 game's working so i really like that um that's i've written next so number five is the flow of the game um it doesn't there's no stop, play a stratagem. There's no stop, I'm going to do this warlord trait. There's no continually piling stratagems. There is no stratagems. The game flows. You're always involved. Um, it's hard to describe what I mean by flow, but you're not stopping all the time. The The game continues. Uh, you can The game just, yeah, it flows. You, you don't stop. There's no sudden stop everything. I've got to play this. Uh, I'm going to look up what I've got to do here. I'm going to play this card. The game has got a nice flow to it. You're always engaged. You're, you're always involved in doing something. You don't sit back and just watch all your stuff get destroyed. Um, and that's what I'll, that's what you're looking for in a, in a game, I think. I, I use the phrase flow, but it, that's sort of what I mean. It's, it's just nice to play. You, you're always involved in it. You've always got something to do. Um, the game is not jerky. It does not stop, start, stop, start. It just plays nicely. Um, that's what I thought of my first game. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, so on that, the reactions are, are really good, how they've done them. Um, there's only two of them in each phase, and ordinarily you can only do one in each phase so there's an option of two in the movement shooting and combat phase and you can use one of them and that's it that's as uh, straightforward as you get there's no three or four pages of stratagems to leaf through to say oh, oh i want that one or i think there's one i've got to play which again goes back to the flow um it's very easy once you get the hang of it you, you can either do this or that and that's your reaction and that's it it's done and i think there's something in that for when they eventually redo forty thousand to get the stratagems to look like that. Maybe not as pared down as that if they want to keep some complexity in it. But the fact that the stratagems are there in black and white, anyone can read them. They're in the main book. Um, you know what's coming. You know what the enemy can do. Um, and you've got to calculate that when you make a, a decision on the battlefield. Um, so I really like how they've done reactions. Because I thought when I, when I read about, oh, they're introducing reactions, or oh, what, what are they going to do there? Is, is that going to be where they start complicating things and inducing more complicated gaming mechanics? But it's not. Once you understand it 
Um, it's very simple. It's very straightforward, and it doesn't um, it doesn't break the flow of the game. Uh, what else have I got? Um, oh, and how you set up objectives. It's not the it's the old style. You alternate placing the objectives on the board. It's the same. They've got to be within twelve inches of each other. So more than twelve inches of each other, and they can't be within six inches of the edge of the board. So you can sort of, to some extent, def start to dictate how you want the battle to go. So if you you're going to think you're going to advance at the enemy's side of the battlefield, you can start putting them more on their side. They can, they, they can put them in your side as well, of course. But I, I like that how even before the game starts, you can start keying up what you think you want your army to do so if you think you're going to get them in or you want to get them into the enemy's half of the board you start putting the objectives more on that side if you think you're going to stay put keep them on your side so you've got something to um to stay on rather than the every game has got a exact mirror objective uh, marker set up um and that's that never changes so i preferred that i think that's how it was in eighth edition 40k as well I liked how that's done. Um, and there's no split firing, which is ironic for the name of my channel. But um, you've really got to make a decision on what you want the unit to do. You can't split like the heavy weapons on one thing and the, um, the lighter weapons on infantry. You pick a target and everything has to shoot at that target. So it makes... It's a lot more important about how you're deciding what is going to shoot at what um yeah so it's, it's a lot more important about how you decide what's going to shoot at what and things like that impacts that if you've got so the mechanicum he's got two weapons which he can fire if he destroys something with his one weapon before the other weapon shoots um it's what it's it's gone the shot is wasted so you can't shoot something with the big mortar that's going to be susceptible to that and pick something else for the bolter Everything shoots at one thing, so it's very it becomes a lot more important how you pick your targets and what order targets are um, selected in. So I like that. Um, what I didn't like uh, is mostly admin based things. the The rule book for the Mechanicum, and I'm assuming the rest of them, that doesn't have an index. Now, fair enough, it's not that many rules in it. There's a lot of fluff and pictures. So, do you need one? It would, might be nice to have one just to see where all the the rules are. Um, there's a lot of cross reference in these two books, so the rules for uh, Automata are in that one, and the rules for Cybernetica are in that one. And he's got the rule Automata bracket Cybernetica. There's they don't repeat the Automata rule in that, but I suppose you'll get used to that once you learn the rules properly. That's not a really major thing. Um, there's there's references in both books to rules, and I would have liked a page number. Um, so there's rules in here which says, you know, this has the rule stubborn, for example, um, and I would have liked a page number to say C big rule book page whatever for that rule. Because there's a lot of cross-referencing, and it would just have made it that a bit easier. But again, that's a that's a nothing complaint. Once you start to learn the game and learn the rules, that'll just come as natural, I think. The only thing I'm not convinced on is they've kept the AP system where your number AP three means everything with three up armor save doesn't get one. I think that's very off and on. Um, I don't like how your armor either works fully or it doesn't work at all. I think I still prefer the modifier system. Um, but it didn't make... I thought it was going to make a big difference in the game. It didn't really make too much of a difference because you roll enough dice and things are going to start dying. Um, so I don't know about that one. I don't know if it would change the balance of the game or presumably there is a balancing reason why they've kept that AP system. Um, I know it was in 6th and 7th edition 40k. Um, I didn't particularly like it then. I prefer the the gun comes with a modifier because there's always a chance that your armor might work even if it's a super strong weapon um but this if it's ap3 and you're three up or worse you don't get armor save on the flip side they seem to have changed a lot of the weapon profiles 
so that there's a lot less AP3 weaponry that uh, that there was in the first edition, at least from what I remember from the few games I've played. Um, so AP value seems to have come down. So maybe it's not an issue. Uh, that's just personal preference. I prefer the individual modifiers rather than the AP system, but that's just me. Um, but yeah, I just thought I would have a brief review of my first game. I could be... I've, I might change your mind on some of them if I play a few more games. But yeah, I was impressed with it. I did enjoy the game. I would like to play again. Um, yeah, and I will I will play it again. Um, I just need to buy 500 points more of resin, which I'll have to remortgage for. But we'll worry about that later. But yeah, that was it. Well, uh, I don't know. More 30k stuff coming soon. Don't know, maybe. Yeah, I might do more 30 case related stuff uh, in the future. Um, it's off to a good start. So, yeah, who knows? Anyway, um, that's it.